Thanks for clicking on this video. I've noticed something that's severely lacking as far as prop building tutorials, and that's how to assemble vacuformed parts. When done properly, you can make vacuform shells look astonishing while taking advantage of the fact that the parts are lightweight, inexpensive, and can be converted to wearable costume pieces. In this sample buildup, I'm transforming this robot arm set of loose parts into a fully finished display arm. Many people can't believe the end result started out as vacuform main parts, so I'm about to show you how it's done step by step. So we have thermal formed shells, so it's half the forearm, these two parts, I mean these two parts, and then half the bicep, these two parts. So I'm going to show you how I put the shells together and bond and seam. We have a resin hand. And we have a baggie of resin detail parts. And also something new is when the forearms go together, there's a new part here. This is a, this is a resin wrist wrap, and it's going to create this, this high detail. And let's go ahead and get started by uh, trimming these vacs. Okay, we are going to trim these guys using shears. These are my favorite shears. These are, I forgot what the brand name is, Orange Handled Shears. You can find them on, um, I think they used to be at Home Depot, but I can't find them at Depot anymore, so I think you can still find these at Amazon. And with these, it's pretty simple to trim. Now, you don't need to make a perfect trim on these, because we're going to be finishing these on a sander. But I'm eyeballing this and I'm determining where that seam line starts, where it ends, that is. I can see where it's, it's the part, 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 and then the seam line, the edge of the part is right here. So we just take our shears and trim that guy off. And again, right here, if you can tell, this is the edge of the part here. I'm just going to rough it out. And then the rest of that, and this, is handled on a belt sander. So I'm building this up as a display arm. So this is the parts are left a little bit big in case anybody wanted to try to build this as a wearable costume component, which it can be, because these are hollow. Uh, let me see. I've got a piece over here. I can show you real quick that these, when you don't make any kind of modification to them, they're hollow, and they're a little bit on the larger side so that you can slip your arm through here and make, make a wearable part. But we're not doing that today. Today we are building a display. So we're going to cinch these parts in a little bit. Just instead of it being a little bit wide like that, we are going to we're going to cinch it in and make it smaller at the wrist and just make an overall skinnier part. So to do that, I've got a heat gun, I've got a hot glove and my part. I'm just going to heat this part up very mildly from the inside. I'm giving it just a little bit of a flex as I'm heating it up just to see where the plastic is at. Plastic is pretty warm, so now we're just going to just kind of bend it in a little bit. Just make a smaller opening for the wrist. A reshaped piece. Here, I'll show you the original part and then here's here's the new part. See, I just kind of curved it in. You can go even more if you wanted to, but that's that's the difference. The biceps and the forearms and every other part that I could think of right now all clamshell together the same way. The top overlaps the bottom. Okay, so we've got the first side done. I'm just going to hold this forearm in position where I want it. Grab my super glue, drip it in, 
to angle this arm down so I can get this glue dripped generously down that seam line. Right now it's, it's running down the seam. Spray kicker. And a clamp. And I'm going to put some spray kicker down on the other side of the seam just in case the super glue didn't get caught in here and wants to drip. So keep an eye on your seam line here. And that's it. Okay, fellas, let's do the same thing for the biceps. Top, overlaps the bottom. And more kicker. And come to this other side. And lock it down. If you're building a right arm, the just real quick, I want to show you that the inner bicep for the right arm is a little bit more relaxed than the other parts are. And again, very easy to correct. Do it in just 30 seconds with a heat gun. Just heat it up and then curve it back uh, to a tighter position. Once we're here, we now want to fine trim the wrist and the inside of the forearm and the same parts on the bicep, you want to trim away the excess flashing that's on both ends. As you can see, I'm using the end of this belt sander. This curve is perfect for coming in and coming in sideways with parts. So if you need to come in here and trim the inside of this, don't try to do it on the, the top of this belt sander. Come over here to this really useful end. This is, this is candy over here. And then just use this shape to come in and do that. And that's perfect when you're doing a, a shape like this. If you will need to trim inside here, you can use a spindle sander or this is sort of like a pretend spindle sander here at the end. Just use that shape to your advantage and sculpt your part. There's a few areas that you can't get on the belt sander. So we're going to go ahead and use a Dremel just to sculpt away some of this excess flashing right here. So just real quick, I want to show you a couple of different techniques you can use to trim these resin parts. Sometimes they're not completely disassembled from the casting. They're together. So if it's a thick band that's holding these resin parts together, you can just hold it down on the sander for a second to separate them like this. That separated those two pieces. We have a little bit of flashing on these. You can hand sand those, or very carefully you could use the sander. I'm going to come down to the end of it over here and use this shape so because I, I can... Oops, I've got a little bit more access here. So I'm using the sander to sculpt that little piece. Then that can be finished by hand. And that piece is mostly done except for just a tiny bit of filing. And the last example is a piece like this. This is uh, the little piston attachment head that goes on the end of the forearm. So you can see there's a little bit of flashing here in a curve shape. We're going to use the end of that sander to curve away that piece there so we have a nice curved edge. I'm going to prime these parts now. Normally I don't prime this early, but I want these parts to be gray so you can see where all the white resin pieces are going to attach. So just give this an initial coat of primer so we can push forward. There's one more step I wanted to touch on. This is 
not a requirement, but if you wanted this to be super, super duper strong, you never wanted it to come apart. And it probably will never will with the, as much super glue and spray kicker as I used. But this is extra insurance. This is ABS cement, uh, Home Depot. This is the brand that I've used in the past. And you want to apply this across your seam line. And you want to do it very liberally so that it covers everywhere the super glue is and the two halves of your vacuform part. And I'm wearing a glove because I need to reach in here a little bit to get really get that seam line. So do it on the entire thing. At this point, you can come in and cover the seam line with Bondo. I'm not going to do that for this build, but if you really, really wanted to go crazy, you could smooth this out. But I am going to just concentrate on filling this area in. This is where the piston is going to be attaching here. I want this to be solid. So what I'm going to use to fill that in, you could use Bondo, you could use whatever your favorite technique is. I prefer using epoxy sculpt, two-part epoxy clay. Just kind of pack it in. Got some water over here on the side. When you wet down your finger or tools, this stuff sculpts a little bit better when the tools are wet. Just go ahead and shave off the excess. Wet this tool. Before I start attaching resin parts, I'm just going to give this these pieces just a little bit of a once over here with some sandpaper. And I've got like a just like a medium sanding brick here. These are these are awesome. I picked these up from Harbor Freight. So I'm just going to give this just a little bit of an abrasion. Okay, here's where the fun begins. Resin detailing. This half piston is going to live in here. There's one more detail piece that's going to go onto this forearm for now. And that's this little piston connection plate. So this has been trimmed on the sander. I'm just going to clean it up just a tiny bit more. Just using this file and a sanding brick. And that is going to go right on top of this. So we want to wrap it. We got want to get a general idea of where the parts meet, which is about right here. I'm just going to do this in sections. I'm just only going to do just this little section here like this. Hold her down. zip it. And I'm just going to follow that procedure just little sections at a time with clamps and just get this thing battened down tight. Okay, this forearm detail is going to go on roundabouts there. This piston attachment head is going to go with the end, like that, and then at your discretion, there's a few extra of these piston halves, about halfway covering that, about a quarter of the way covering that seam line. These are going to be dremeled out hollow so we can put screws through here to attach to the bicep. I didn't film this step, but I applied some Bondo on the outside of this wrist just to fill in that gap between the vacuform plastic and the resin casting. So now it's a solid look and that is going to look really fantastic as the wrist. Make sure to pilot hole the screws on both sides.
Okay, let me show you how these pistons work. Now these are static pistons. Um, there's a place, there's a maker somewhere out there that does actually working pistons. Those are great, but these are static. Let me show you how they attach. So I've got the tab sticking here. I've got another tab sticking out here. Another tab sticking out here. And then this is the attachment point for the elbow joint. This is the inner piston, so we have a head. And it's going to be hard to tell, but the head has a notch that notches into that tab. And at the end of this piston, it's split. I don't know if that's in focus or not. It's split so that just pressure fits onto that tab. And we have the same thing going on in the back. We have a split. I just did that using a bandsaw. So this pressure fits onto that. Then you can add a pin through there. And then over here, same deal. I've got a notch with the tab coming off of this head piston. And that slides into that assembly just like that. I am going to get it in position. I'm going to figure out where the attachment, where it actually is touching in here. I'm going to line that with super glue and spray a little spray kicker onto this hand and then just get it on here and hold it until it sets position. Then I'll take this apart. I'll unscrew these two screws. I'll, I'll get the pistons off. I'll come in here and I'll get some five minute epoxy. And I'll epoxy this inside here just to really make sure this hand doesn't, um, doesn't ever fall off. The final piece of resistance is these knuckle pistons, three of them. You can glue these on. I would recommend pinning these, putting little pins through there so they're held on extremely securely. I did the left and right as I was filming this tutorial. I started this yesterday afternoon and finished it this afternoon. So really it just it's like a day of work if you have the time to commit to it. And this doesn't have the wires on here. I'll do another tutorial where I paint this and detail it because there's another there's another piece you can put in here, a little piece of ribbed rubber sheeting could line the inside of that elbow. And this completely belies the fact that this is vacuform main shells. I mean, this really looks like an amazing piece. So stay tuned for my next tutorial where I'm going to paint and detail these up. Thanks for watching.